not very musical right now. It's a little. <laughs> start right at letter B with the center spaces.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this very warm Easter Sunday. It's wonderful to be back with you all. I had a a lovely time away. Um, For those of you who don't know, my parents got a new puppy. His name is Micah. He's very sweet. He is a lovely little miniature poodle puppy. Piper, my little dog, is not a puppy. So while I might be in love with Micah, Piper is not. So it was a very interesting week together. (laughs) We're so glad that uh, you're all here with us and a special welcome to all of you who may be tuning in with us uh, from online. It's wonderful to have you with us today as well. As we begin, we begin with our land acknowledgement. Trinity Lutheran Church acknowledges that we live and worship on the traditional territories of the indigenous peoples of the Treaty 6 region and the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 4. Together we call upon all of our collective honored traditions and spirits to work in continuing right relationship that we may create a more vibrant, healthy community for today and future generations. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to stand, to sit, or to kneel, and we will sing our gathering hymn, number 379, Now the Green Blade Rises. Let us prepare ourselves for our confession and our forgiveness. Wondrous God, we confess that at times our doubts and fears override our hope and faith. Forgive us when we lose sight of the joy of your love and instead fall into despair and gloom. Lift up our spirits, Lord, and help us to remember the promise of new life here and now, not just the hope of resurrection for the future. We give thanks for your Son, Jesus the Christ, who continues to offer us new life, 
who continues to turn us around and upside down, who continues to break down the walls of death in our own life. Forgive us, restore us, and renew us. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. The tomb is empty. The stone is rolled away. There is no gloom now, only life. God continues to renew us and restore us. We are forgiven, loved and restored, receiving the gift and promise of new life and resurrection right here, right now, today. Let us go and share the wondrous news of God's love in Jesus the Christ, knowing that all our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our Kyrie and our Gloria. You can find them on page 175 and 176 in our hymnals. As we do every year, we are installing our new council makeup. I'd like to call uh, forward Dina Hinshaw, Juanita Garrett, Will Tanowski, John Machinsky, and Monica Bishop, and Pastor Sigmar. And we will <coughs> share an installation together. The following people have been elected by the congregation to the positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. Dina Hinshaw. Again, Dina Hinshaw, Chair, Juanita Ross Garrett, Vice Chair, Will Tonowski, Secretary, John Machinsky, Treasurer, and Monica Bishop. A reading from 1 Corinthians, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit and there are varieties of services but the same Lord. And there are 
varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activities are all of them in everyone. To each is giving the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 1 Corinthians 12. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. So, on behalf of your brothers and sisters in Christ here today, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, please respond with, I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I ask you, Will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, please respond with, we will and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as officers and council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome them with a round of applause. As they are returning to their seats, I invite the rest of us to turn back into our bulletins and we will share in our prayer of the day together. Let us pray. Miraculous God, come to us now, even as your son came to those first disciples hidden away in fear. Speak your peace to our hearts. Touch us with your Holy Spirit. Reveal your word that we may hear your message this day and live as your disciples in the days and years to come. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We have a real treat this morning. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 4. So the choir is gonna sing a piece based on the text. And then we're going to sing a hymn that is also based on the text. Psalms were meant to be sung and chanted, and so I'm excited that we have two different kinds of Psalm 4 that we can share with one another this morning.
you choir. Now I invite us, uh, congregation, to stand, sit, or kneel, and let us turn to number 614, sing that old spiritual, There is a Balm in Gilead. Please be seated. And Juanita is our reader this morning. The reading is from 1 John 3, 1 to 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will pass, what we will be, has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to turn to page 179 in your hymnals and let us stand, sit, or kneel, and we'll share in our gospel acclamation together this morning.
Holy Gospel according to Luke in the 24th chapter. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Let's pray together. God, thank you that you are indeed amongst us that you still whisper to us, peace be with you. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. This morning I want to tell you the story of Cookham Gladys. Cookham Gladys was an indigenous elder and counselor I knew, mentoring women and girls who had been exploited or who had suffered abuse and needed compassion and love from a kind of, you know, a culturally grounded indigenous perspective. Cookham Gladys was everybody's grandmother and she looked the part too soft wrinkles on her face, the kind of smile that made her dark eyes sparkle. She'd faced her own lifetime of abuses and traumas and possessed much wisdom that she planted deep within herself in grounds of tender, loving care. Now in the program that I happen to be working in, some of the participants struggling with the deepest forms of anger, rage, hurt, and addiction, spent more than a few hours with Cookham Gladys. The strange thing was, Cookham Gladys, Cookham Gladys hardly ever spoke a word. You see, Cookham Gladys would invite the most broken into her kitchen. Her kitchen would be ready to go for a baking session. She rarely demanded anyone talk about their experiences or what was bothering them. Instead, she simply said, we're baking bread here today. Here, I'll show you how. And step by step, she had whoever was with her prepare the yeast mixture and then get the flour mixture ready. And finally, it was time to turn it all into dough. Now by this point, many people were already really frustrated as most people who came to her didn't have any baking experience at all, much less any experience baking yeast breads. Tears would be flooding the eyes, shoulders just would be tight and tense and Sometimes folks would outright refuse to do anything or shout or swear or mutter, this is just so stupid. Don't tell me, Cookham Gladys would say. 
tell the bread dough. Take all that anger, fear, trauma, and pain, and knead it into the dough. Just keep kneading, was all she would say. And whether it was Cookham Gladys's kindly demeanor, her quiet way, or simply the strangeness of being in a kitchen at all, most people began doing just that. They began kneading. Again and again and again, they would punch that dough, pound it, spend time with it, feel it in their hands, and direct all that emotional pain into the dough. Now, Cookham Gladys would announce, now it's time to bake. But don't forget to smell the air. And as the bread began to turn a golden, crusty brown, angry, hurting, and terrified people would do just that. They would smell that bread that they had made, that they had infused with their own tears. And their shoulders would begin to relax just a little bit. Tears would suddenly become tears of release rather than rage. Cookham Gladys never used a timer in her kitchen. She knew when that bread was done just by the smell. Besides, when supporting traumatized people, loud, sudden noises are never a good idea. Now, Cookham Gladys would say, now it is ready to take out of the oven and to let it cool down. And they would remove the loaf from the oven and let it sit for a time. And while the bread was resting, Cookham Gladys would have her guests help tidy up her kitchen. And Cookham Gladys would make tea. Now, anyone who has ever baked bread knows, and I know there are a lot of bakers here, it's always wise to let it cool completely before slicing into it, otherwise the bread falls apart. And by the time cleanup was done and the tea was made, the bread was still rather warm. But anyone who's anyone knows how hard it is to wait for such a beautiful smelling bread. More often than not, Cookham Gladys invited herself and her guests to slice into the warm, chewy, falling apart bread, slathered with her homemade butter and Saskatoon jam. And once she and her guests were sharing in this tea and bread together alone at the table, then and only then would say, now my friend, what's troubling you? And by and large, with all the work done, all the pain that had been shoved into the dough, all the sensory healing of playing in that elastic dough, smelling that bread and the fresh mint of her tea, most people found themselves in a safer, more wondrous space to begin to talk about the pain of the past while maybe considering new life. Jesus, too, needs to find ways to embody the peace he's speaking about to his friends. It's easy enough to say, peace be with you. You know, get those paintings where Jesus is the serene, magical figure with the, with the light around him. And we wonder, is that really real? But when we're terrified or in pain, they can often be just words. And we need actions. We need demonstrations. We need our senses engaged to help break past our stuckness. Last week you heard about the disciples, including Thomas, hidden away. Well, here they still are, hiding and fearful and hurting. What else might they need? What they need is more than a word. What they need is more than verbal reassurance, even if the person in front of them really is Jesus. They need assurance in the whole of their bodies and spirits. 
Last week, Thomas had the body of Jesus to touch. This week, we have the same, and we have a piece of broiled fish. So imagine it. People already so deeply fearful and confused being asked a very simple uh, task. Feed me. Oh, okay, Jesus, we'll, we'll just go do that then. Um, someone then maybe stokes up the small little household oven, gets the coals just perfect. And then someone else checks the fish stores from the morning's shopping run and, oops, oh, maybe there's no fish to be had. Hey, Matthew, can you be the one to run out and grab a few extra fish? Jesus is kind of hungry. Fish in hand, someone else preps it and sets it to broil. The smell of raw fish slowly turning to roasting fish on the air, the feel of scales coming off as people wash their hands after cooking. Here, here Jesus, here's some food. Let, let's share in some food together. With all the horror and hubbub that's happened over the past few days, who knows when this group of people have actually last eaten. And here is simple fish. Its nutrients and protein and salt slowly helping return their electrolyte levels back to a little bit more of a stable state. Heart rates begin to beat regularly again. The sheer normalcy of sitting around basic healthy food with their best friend. This is soothing. This is healing. This is what was needed not just to act as proof <laughs> that it really was Jesus, but to assist these hurting people through a critical time so they could experience the shalom Jesus had already spoken about. Before that, their bodies just weren't ready. Their spirits weren't ready. And this, as humans, this was by design. We aren't strictly auditory or verbal creatures, none of us. We can't just listen to words and suddenly believe things through and through. Belief has to be cultivated in our entire selves. And for that to happen, our entire selves need to experience the healing and touch of God's peace. Words alone don't always go far enough. Important, yes, and some of us uh, are, are more wired to be inspired by words and others of us less so, but altogether, not always enough. Shalom of God, this being embodied peace together, means we often need more than spoken syllables on the air. The shalom of God resides in the gifts of broiled fish, and really pounded out bread dough. <laughs> Bruno Feldstein of the great Canadian baking show might call it overworked and overproofed. But oh well. <laughs> the shalom of God resides in casseroles brought over at the first news of a birth or a death. It's the lawn cut for a neighbor, relieving them not only of a perhaps onerous task to do, but sharing the sweet fragrance of freshly cut grass with the whole community. The shalom of God is the slow, steady time spent with a loved one who's been away for far too long, and we can't quite believe they're here amongst us again. The shalom of God is one more story at bedtime when all you need to do is go to sleep, but your child needs your touch and your closeness just a little bit longer. The shalom of God is in the soil of our first spring plantings and in notes sung at choir rehearsal when voices are raised together. These simple, simple things that knit us together hold the power of healing and God's shalom through and through. Shared time shared space, shared food, shared drink, shared touch, shared memories. 
It helps us to begin to understand why grief at the loss of these things can drag us under so quickly and so hard. We are created as humans to find peace in embodied togetherness. Be that, you know, the rousing extroverted togetherness of sparkling parties or dances, or the laid back introverted conversations over tea and scones. When we can share embodied love between us, we start, however small, to find our moorings again, even in the hardest and most terrible of times. The peace Jesus speaks softly over us begins to become real. For we can see it, feel it, sense it, smell it, touch it, hear it, taste it, dance with it, God's shalom finally becomes more than just a catchphrase. God's shalom takes the time to recognize that all of who we are needs attentive care, needs peace in its own way. The mind might find peace at the sound of the words of God, but the body, the body needs fish or bread. The heart, the heart needs presence. One is not more important than the other. God's peace values all of us and meets those needs and empowers us to meet the needs of one another. God's shalom reminds us when we care for one another as the disciples cared for Jesus, that healing happens too when we care for one another in the midst of the struggle. And yes, there are certainly times when we ourselves are hurting so badly and can't, that we can't get out of bed. Sometimes we're prevented from reaching out, and I'm not denying that at all. Those times are very real and very common. And there is much healing, too, in the care and love of those around us. We pour our whole selves, love and pain and all, into these simple acts of touch and care. What good gospel news, my friends, that God loves the whole of us, not just the sum of us. As the disciples began to realize the enormity of the good news, as their grief finally begins to turn to hope once more, may we too encounter radical acts of simplicity that completely astound us, that embody the shalom we are desperately seeking. And in these strange and simple encounters, may we too become the embodied shalom of God in the world. For the world needs us, this beloved people of God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is new to some of you. It's out of our hymn addendum, All Creation Sings. It's printed for you in your bulletin. Um, if you wanna hum along or listen along for the first verse until you catch on, you are more than welcome to jump in when you feel ready, but it is a beautiful, beautiful hymn that really uh, underscores the power of our gospel text this morning. Um, I will invite our ushers forward as we sing and we will take our offering at this time.
Holy God, we thank you for the gifts you have given us. And as you have acted in our lives, we act in response and offer some of what you have given us to you. May the gifts be used for your love in community and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, choir. That is my most very favorite hymn in the world, so I'm so glad you were able to share the choral version with us this morning. I will invite you now to turn to page 105 in your hymnal to stand, sit, or kneel, and let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As Winita comes forward to help us with our prayers this morning, when she and I offer the call of God in your mercy, you are invited to respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray together as a community made one in Jesus Christ. Holy God, as Jesus entered the locked room to show his disciples the beginning of a new world, so enter our hearts and move us to faith in Jesus as the risen one. Convince us of the reality and significance of the resurrection and free us from all manner of fears and phobias. Give us courage in the face of death, knowing that this is the gateway to new resurrected life for those who trust in Christ. God, in your mercy. Be with your church throughout the world so that its preaching and works of love may continue to testify to the life and resurrection of Jesus. We pray for the church in the Holy Land as they minister to people of all faiths during a time of fear, war, genocide, and famine. May we, their global siblings and you, become a strength and a joy to them as they witness to your love and your peace. God, in your mercy. Wherever relationships are distorted and dulled, remind each person of the presence and love of your spirit and bring peace and harmony. Empower us to be your hands and feet. We thank you for our synodical leadership and we pray especially for Bishop Larry this week as he teaches and shares in Bible study in Ghana this week. God in your mercy. Healing God, heal and strengthen weakened bodies, calm and soothe disrupted minds. We pray for those we know with particular needs. For Otto, Marguerite, Irene. We thank you, God, that Nellie has come home and we continue to pray for her care and comfort and healing. For Sarah, Davis and their baby, for Wilma, for Maruna, Morella, and Elinka, for Ava, as she has been able to come home as well, and for her care and ongoing comfort, we pray for her healing, and for Doreen, as she heals from surgery, for Christine and Scott, Work through us that your great love and mercy will be made known. We thank you too for those people we have elected to our council. We pray for Dina, Juanita, Will, John, and Monica, that your spirit would continue to inspire them and empower them as they conduct the business and community of the church this year. And at this time, we ask that you be with those people known to us and whom we now name in our hearts or aloud. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Divine love, we present these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is risen from the dead and who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace now and a special sign of peace to all of you tuning in from online. I invite you to share a sign of peace with whoever you might be with today.
begin to prepare for our time in communion together this morning, I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 180. We are going through setting seven this Easter season, and you are more than welcome to follow along with the liturgy that is printed there. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember together our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. 
with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun, moon, and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. We will have two stations this morning as usual, one on the floor, one up here at the rail. I'll invite the helpers forward now. Come for the table is ready.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you in sharing with us our service this morning. It was so good to spend time with all of you. Thank you, Aaron, Sherry, Frank, and the choir, Richard and Winita, uh, Roseanne and Beverly, all for helping in the service this morning. Thank you so much for your music. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful set of songs. Thank you. Confirmation event, 1.30. Today, thanks, Tobias, I get the woohoo. <laughs> He's just excited because we're doing dip day. So I've got six different kinds of dips and different things to dip with. So hopefully I don't disappoint. <laughs> but it is from 1.30 to 4.30, we are gonna be chatting up ecumenism. So we have representatives from the Anglican Church and the Moravian Church. Uh, it's gonna be a really fun afternoon, maybe with a few uh, dad jokes thrown in. Sylvia, you have an announcement about Camp Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Sylvia, I'm a member here at Trinity and on the board of directors for Mulhurst Camp. Did you know that uh, Trinity is one of about, oh, I think it's about 15 uh, member churches of Mulhurst? And Trinity folks have been so highly involved in Mulhurst over the years. Um, our congregational, our current congregational reps are Darlene Schindel, and I see her here this morning. And she's also served on the board as chair, and Maria Mayen is another one of our reps, and, uh, and she serves on the board as well. Um, and, I, and I can't forget to mention the wonderful, wonderful youth that we had, have here at Trinity who have vol volunteered and worked as summer staff to impact the lives of children. And that's what Mulhurst is all about. So I want to add to Pastor Aaron's announcements over the last few weeks, and I want to invite you to be part of Camp Sunday at Mulhurst. You know, as a board, we were sitting around um, the table a couple of, well, might have been a couple of months ago, and planning for Camp Sunday. And, uh, and last year, we sent out um, information to churches. We sent out an order of service and a sermon. And we held Camp Sunday individually at churches. And somebody around the table said, well, wait a minute. You know, why, why aren't we doing Camp Sunday at camp? And that made a whole lot of sense. So that's what we're planning for. We hope that you join us on May 5th at 1 o'clock rain or shine. We have a beautiful facility and that's where the service will be held inside. And so a couple of different ways. You may choose to come to Trinity first to take part in our little service here at 1030 and then head out right afterward. Uh, perhaps catching a ride with somebody or offering a ride to somebody or you may choose to have a relaxing morning at home, have a brunch, and drive out from home and hopefully bring some friends and neighbors along. Whichever way you come out, we ask that you sign up um, in the atrium. And even if you, if you don't end up coming but you think you're going to come, put your name down and include the number of people who are coming along in your family or your group. Just so that we know how many chairs to set up for the service and most importantly, how many hot dogs to buy. <laughs> Um, we, we don't want to miss out on that. Um, so just to let you know, it's going to be super simple. A hot dog, you know, they'll be barbecuing for people who don't want to roast. And roasting, if you want to bring some veggies along on your own, you can do that. But it'll basically be hot dogs, maybe some chips and, and a drink. If you haven't been there lately, come and see what's happening out at Mulhurst. Um, if you haven't seen the new deck expansion, I know that's been a while. Come and see the lodge expansion. Um, the, the new washrooms, 
uh, the new kitchen that's being built, the new craft area. It, it's quite wonderful and just a wonderful space um, for all kinds of functions that you may have in your, in your family group. Bring along your lawn chair, bring along some hot dog wiener sticks if you want to roast, and maybe a blanket and some warm clothes. How lovely it would be to have many, many people coming out to worship together, to sing camp songs, to roast a hot dog around that great big fire, to reminisce and share camp stories, and to just sit on the lodge deck, one of my favorite things to do, and just look and take in that wonderful lake view. Hope to see you there. So for those of you who didn't hear, Pastor Matt Lysing from Peace Leduc will be preaching that afternoon at Mulhurst. Roseanne, you had an announcement to make. Isn't it wonderful that we can get together for many good things? And I want to invite you to a welcome party um, on for Ala and for Nada and Ghassan our family that we sponsored from Syria who are now settling in and learning some English and, and um, it's time to just have a party. So there will be some music, some Syrian music, it's potluck, we'll be able to share food and, um, and be together as an expanding community. So the event is next Sunday, 5 p.m., potluck, here in Luther Center. Wonderful. Dina, you have an announcement. I'm really happy today. It's not all me making all the announcements. <laughs> I apologize. I'm keeping people from their lunch. Um, so a year ago, I was asked if I would have my name stand for council, and I was very reluctant. I had a lot of uncertainty, was very busy, uh, but ultimately agreed with some arm twisting, I admit. Um, to let my name stand, and I'm so grateful I did. It's been an amazing year. I'm grateful to have gotten to know people on council, to gotten to know Trinity better, um, and I am inviting others to join us in that opportunity. Uh, we have some unexpected vacancies on council, and so we have a nominating committee, and so I want to express appreciation to Sylvia Becker, Roseanne Thied, and Gertrude Reichel, who've agreed to help by uh, prayerfully considering who in the congregation um, might be willing to step up uh, for this particular piece. I know that uh, there are so many people serving Trinity and the community in many, many ways. This is just one way. Uh, but I'd ask that you consider, even if you served at some time in the past on council, if you might be willing to come back again. Uh, and also, maybe you've never served but might be interested, please talk to one of those ladies or one of us on council. Uh, if you have any questions and consider whether or not that might be something that you could join us in. There's also a few committees that um, would benefit from some additional members, so if that's something you're interested in, again, uh, the nominating committee would have more information about that. So thank you and uh, please consider joining us for a lot of good conversation and good fellowship building. Thank you, Dina. Any further announcements from the community this morning? Wonderful. So with that, I invite you to stand, to sit or to kneel and receive God's blessing this morning. We have eaten together with the risen Christ. Go out then as witnesses of these things. Attend to your heart Worship with integrity, trust in the Lord, proclaim forgiveness and healing in his name to all. And may God raise you from death to life, from brokenness to healing. May Christ Jesus cast out your fear and your doubt, and may the Holy Spirit give your heart joy, even as the bread and wine give your body life. In the name of the Creator, and of Jesus, our Redeemer, and of the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Amen. Let us sing our sending song together, number 390, The Risen Christ. 